Su Hua is in the middle of studying in the library when Hai Young and Hei Young approach him with some food and ask him to join them if he hasn't eaten yet, which Su Hua gratefully accepts. Once the three of them are in the cafeteria, they ask him if he's studying for the finals or for the graduation exam. Su Hua then tells them that he's doing so for both. This made Hai Young say that she's not looking forward to her senior year now, and Hei Young declared he had to make sure he doesn't fail any classes so he can have a lighter load on his senior year. Then again, Suwa points out that their school has a demanding curriculum, so they'll probably just end up like him. They then ask him when Suwa's graduation exam is, to which he nonchalantly replies that it will happen on the weekend right after finals. This is why I don't miss going to school. Anyway, Heyum starts saying how he's now getting sad that Suwa is graduating soon. And since they are now on the topic, they then ask him what his plans are after graduation. Suwa explains that he's working on some things like getting certificates and taking some exams. Hyun comments that she can just imagine how sad Yohan would become once Suwa gets a job, since that would mean they won't get to spend as much time together as they do now. Speaking of Suwa in return, ask them about their plans after college as well. Hyun explains that she wants to go to grad school, while Hyun plans to work in the travel and tourism industry. With the two of them already set on what they want to do, Suwa comments how it looks like they're going to be very busy and wonders if they'll be all right. His Kubeis confidently say that they will be, and that's why they plan on spending as much time together as they can in the coming year. Suwa that made them promise to invite him once they got married. In return, Hegeon made Suwa promise to sing at their wedding. That came out of nowhere. Did Suwa have a good voice? Anyways, with all these talks about graduation, Suwa couldn't help but feel restless for some reason. Later that night, Suwa was in a hurry to get home after realizing how late it had been. Suwa cautiously enters their place, wondering if Johan is mad. He did send a text to Johan, but the older man didn't reply. But as soon as he got inside, he was surprised to see that the bed is empty, looking around. He was surprised to see Johan doing something at the dining table. Johan is so concentrated on doing whatever it is that he doesn't even notice Suwa arrive nor approach him from behind. Suwa managed to get a glimpse of what was in front of Johan and saw a bunch of papers with unidentified scribbles on them. Suwa couldn't make out anything from it and wondered if they're drawings or actual letters. Just then, Johan stretches his arms up and decided to call it a day. As he did, one of his arms bumps into Suwa, making him so flustered that he involuntarily raised his voice as he asks Suwa when he just got home. Suwa apologizes for startling Johan and asks what he's up to. Instead of answering, though, Johan just tries to cover the papers and get Suwa's attention away from it by pointing out how he got home late and asking if he had dinner yet. He even went as far as asking Suwa, if they should just go straight to bed. But of course, Suwa is perfectly aware of what he's doing and decides to tease Johan. Suwa then asks him what he's hiding. He admits that he can't really tell what it was, but now he's curious. Johan tries his best to hide it, and after a couple of attempts, Suwa is thinking of giving it a rest since he doesn't really want to see it if Johan really insists on hiding it. The teasing was becoming too much for Johan that he had no choice but to up and grab Suwa, drop him on the bed, and tuck him in for the night. Johan even starts singing him a lullaby to attempt to get him to sleep and forget everything, which just made Suwa more curious, seeing as how flustered Johan had become and wonders if Johan is hiding something from him. That aside, Suwa tells Johan that he can't just sleep because Johan's lullaby just got him into the mood. Seriously, I just can't with this pervy couple. On another day, Jihei was making deliveries in the shop and had just brought in the last box. Suwa comments on how he had brought in more than he usually brings. That's when Jihei tells him that Johan ordered more than usual on purpose this time, probably because Jihei is quitting. This surprises Suwa, who had no idea about it. Jihei then explains that it was also unplanned, although it will still be working until the end of the year, which isn't that long since it will just be around two months away. Suddenly, Ji Yoon approaches them and tells them to get some rest as he and Johan will move the boxes inside. Jihei offered to help, but Ji Yoon insisted. He even told Suwa to stay there with Jihei since he had something to tell Johan. As Ji Yoon pulls Johan away, Jihei just says that the two of them have something to talk about. Although all it did to Suwa is make him tremble in fear, wondering what could be so important that Ji Yoon let him rest even though he usually never does. That was when Jihei admitted that it's probably because Ji Yoon is also going to quit his job at the cafe to help Jihei prepare for his study abroad program. Meanwhile, on Johan and Ji Yoon's side, the two of them just finished putting everything in place when Ji Yoon calls Johan over to talk. 
Ji Yun tells Yohan about Ji Hei's situation and how he plans to help him. Ji Yun explains that Ji Hei was supposed to move back to his parents and help with their business, even though he's clearly interested in furthering his studies, and because he wants to support him. Ji Yun encouraged him to do it abroad, and that's why he's going to go with him. Although Ji Hei won't be applying until next year, Ji Yun is going to get busy helping him out, so he probably won't have time to work in the cafe. Ji Yun then went on about how he owes Yohan for the rest of his life and that he doesn't have the right to ask to leave and whatnot. That's when Yohan stops him and tells him to go with Ji Hei and to not feel bad. Yohan points out that Ji Yun doesn't really owe him anything and that what happened wasn't Ji Yun's fault. If anything, it's Yohan who feels grateful for everything Ji Yun has done for him, for helping Yohan open the cafe and for learning sign language together with him, when Yohan was afraid to speak. Yohan pats Ji Yun's head as he tells him that he has done more than enough. In fact, Yohan doesn't even know how he's going to repay Ji Yun. So, there's no need for him to worry and just go with Ji Hei. Ji Yun doesn't even need to work for him again, either. He can just do what he wants. But Ji Yun obviously still wants to, so Yohan had to rephrase his words. Anyways, going back to Ji Hei and Su Wa's side. They were talking about how Yohan and Ji Yun are taking a while in their talk and how Ji Hei is going to get super busy by next year. Ji Hei admits that he never had thought of going abroad, so there's a lot of things to do by then. Su Wa then asks him if Gi Yun had forced him to do it, although that's really not the case. In fact, Ji Hei tells Su Wa that Ji Yun's always walking on eggshells around him. That was such news to Su Wa that he wanted to see it in action. Moving to a different topic, Ji Hei asks Su Wa about the scattered papers in the cafe. Su Wa tells him to just ignore it. He explains that Johan seems to be preparing something in secret. Unfortunately, he's not that good at hiding things. Although in Su Wa's opinion, Johan just doesn't make an effort because he knows that Su Wa can't read what's in the papers. Ji Hei picks up one of the papers and, after a glance, tells Su Wa that what is written in it are letters. Turns out Ji Hei can actually read and understand them. Ji Hei explains that although Johan's handwriting is pretty bad, there's a pattern to it. Ji Hei even advises Su Wa how to do it, but Su Wa doesn't get it and just concludes that Ji Hei is just good at everything. As for the most important part, Su Wa tries to ask Ji Hei what the letter says and if he's allowed to know. Su Wa is heading down to the cafe while he's planning on his itinerary for the day when he suddenly hears a crash and hurriedly walks to the source. Apparently, Johan had dropped the plate in accident. Just when Ji Yun is telling Johan that he'll clean it up and that he shouldn't touch the pieces with his bare hands, Johan actually hurts himself. This sends Su Wa and Ji Yun into a panic, as if Johan is in a hiyun to the both of them. Moving on, Ji Yun tells Su Wa to take Johan to the staff room to treat his cuts and since he still had time before his classes while Ji Yun cleans up. Ji Yun then pushes Johan into Su Wa's arms, letting Su Wa hug him, which the younger man quite enjoyed since it feels like he's hugging a bear. Later in the staff room, they were just about done treating Johan's cuts when Su Wa asks Johan what had happened. After all, Johan isn't the type to make mistakes like that and wonders if Johan is sick or something. Johan then tells him that he's not and that his hand is just cramped up, grabbing Johan's hand to give it a massage. Su Wa thinks that Johan has been working too hard these days, and that he did. Su Wa is quick to conclude that it was probably because of those letters that Johan had been writing a lot these days. He suddenly sprung up that he didn't notice the stool he had been sitting on fell over. Su Wa even shoved a piece to Johan's face, which the older man is quick to take back. Su Wa then started scolding Johan about it, and admits that Ji Hei won't even tell him what it says. Going back to the conversation Su Wa had with Ji Hei about the letters, Ji Hei had told him that he's not in the position to reveal what it says, so Su Wa should just calm down. When the right time comes, Johan himself will tell Su Wa about it. One thing's for sure, though, is that it didn't contain anything against Su Wa, and so Su Wa decided to just let it go. Back to the present, Su Wa grabs Johan's hand again as he tells him how it's making him upset. Anyway. Su Wad is just about to return to his seat, not realizing that it has already fallen. He lost his balance and even pulled Johan down with him. Su Wa falls on his bum bums and tries to nurse it as he asks Johan if he's alright. Johan, however, is more than just fine as he suddenly starts laughing. Embarrassed, Su Wa tries to scold Johan for laughing at his accident. Johan then apologizes, telling Su Wa that he was laughing because Su Wa was so cute. The older man then suddenly kisses Su Wa as he tells him that he doesn't want him to go to school. Su Wa 
then returns the kiss and even pushes Johan to the floor so that Suwa straddles him. He then tells Johan that he has class at 1, and it's currently 11.30. Although he can't skip class, he can spare some time. Suwa then slips his hand on Johan's covered ahem and declares that since Johan hurt his hand, Suwa will do everything. Johan didn't say anything in response. Instead, he just slips his hands inside Suwa's pants, and the two of them stare at each other while blushing, perfectly aware of what's going to happen next. Suwa couldn't help keep his voice in as Johan starts servicing him with his hand. Johan is scolding himself for doing that to Suwa, even though he knows that he has to let him go to school now. As for Suwa, he's reflecting on the fact that he didn't mean to want to do the rodeo at the moment, not to mention, he already declared that he'd do everything instead of Johan. They were doing just fine when Suwa suddenly almost moaned aloud, and as soon as he did, Johan managed to pull himself together to push Suwa away. Johan declares that Suwa needs to go to school and, in a flash, managed to fix Suwa's pants, jacket, and face. Johan even puts a scarf back around Suwa's neck as he walks him out of the room. He kisses him goodbye and tells Suwa to text him once he gets to school. Johan slams the door in Suwa's face, leaving him to complain about having to stop in the middle of doing it. Johan, however, is extremely proud of himself for holding himself back. After all, he can't let Suwa be late for class. Later in the afternoon, as soon as his class was over, Suwa didn't waste any time and stood up to leave. Hayam was with him, telling him that Hayam said he'd be running late so she's thinking of joining Suwa in the library while she waits for him. But then Suwa declares that he's going straight home because he had something to do with Johan, saying so with a very flushed face that even Hayam felt awkward and couldn't say anything but just wish her Sunday luck. A woman's instinct is usually spot on, so whatever she's thinking is probably right. Anyway, as Suwa tries to hurry back home, he has no choice but to briefly stop after he realizes that Hee Yoon Ho's following him. Suwa tries to shoo the older man away, saying that he's busy today and can't hang out with him. But Hee Yoon Ho insists and even tries to use the pastries he had to change Suwa's mind. Suwa eventually gives in and starts eating the pastries that Hee Yoon Ho bought with him. Suwa asks Hee Yoon Ho what he was doing there, when he's supposed to be on vacation. Hee Yoon Ho explains that he just happens to be in the neighborhood and that even though he did get a couple of days off, none of his friends were free, so he had no one to hang out with. Suwa then starts complaining about how he often runs into weird people when he's busy and starts thinking about getting his horoscope checked or something. He then suggests that Hee Yoon Ho should coordinate his vacation days with his friends from work, only for Hee Yoon Ho to scoff at the idea. Either this dude is too much for his co-workers or his co-workers are too much for him. I'm betting on the former. Anyway, Hee Yoon Ho once again tries to convince Suwa to hang out with him since he's already tired of playing by himself. But Suwa tells him that he really can't since he's busy today. He even ho guessed that it's because Suwa had to study and tells him that taking a day off from studying wouldn't hurt. And when Suwa admits that he's just got some stuff to do with Johan, he even ho starts teasing him about how he and Johan should get used to being apart to prepare for when Suwa gets a job and stuff. Suwa's mood suddenly changes, making he even ho think that he might have gone too far and try to take back his words. But Suwa wasn't really upset and even told Hee Yoon Ho that something like that wouldn't ever drive him and Johan apart. In the end, Suwa agrees to hang out with Hee Yoon Ho for an hour. Although he warns him that they shouldn't go anywhere fancy, since he hadn't been working this semester, so he doesn't have a lot of money to spend. Hearing Suwa say such mature words made Hee Yoon Ho feel like having his younger brother all grown up, even though he didn't actually have one. And so, when Suwa asks him if they should go ahead and grab something to eat, Hee Yoon Ho declares that it'll be his treat and asks Suwa what he wants to eat. That Suwa can just tell him whatever he wants. But when Suwa says that he just wants to go home, Hee Yoon Ho tells him that he can, but only after an hour. It was already super late at night. Hee Yoon Ho is carrying Suwa on his back and pleads at the younger man to wake up while having a panicked expression on. Suwa mumbles about not drinking anymore, and Hee Yoon Ho responds that there's no need for him to, to just wake up. After all, if Suwa gets home this late, who knows what Johan might do? He Yoon Ho laments on the fact that Johan might actually kill He Yoon Ho himself. Going back to a few hours prior, Suwa and He Yoon Ho were having grilled meat, and He Yoon Ho was teasing Suwa for being glad that he actually came with him. He Yoon Ho then orders some soju and beer from the passing waiter, prompting Suwa to ask if he's going to drink. Well, duh. He Yoon Ho declares that, of course, he's going to drink. After all, they're eating pork belly. 
although Su Hua doesn't need to drink since He Yun Ho just ordered for himself. Anyway, it's not like Su Hua felt compelled to join He Yun Ho in drinking. It's just that he's concerned since he's only going to hang out with He Yun Ho for an hour. Not long after, several bottles were delivered to their table, and Su Hua complained about being unable to drink a lot, but He Yun Ho dismisses his concerns, saying that he's not going to force Su Hua to drink everything since he can hold his liquor well. Su Hua then asks He Yun Ho why he invited him and if he finds it fun. After all, it's not like the two of them are close, but He Yun Ho insists that they're pretty tight. Plus, he finds it fun just being able to hang out with someone. It doesn't really matter to He Yun Ho who he hangs out with as long as they're not from work. Ah, I totally get you. Unfortunately, innocent young Su Hua doesn't. Yet, changing the topic, He Yun Ho asks if Su Hua prefers soju or beer. Suwa responds that he prefers beer since soju is too bitter and doesn't taste good when mixed with other drinks. That's when He Yun Ho starts bragging about how he can mix drinks well back in his college days. Anyways, all the talk made Suwa curious. And so, He Yun Ho asks him if he wants to give it a try. Suwa then agrees to try just one shot before He Yun Ho starts mixing. Though, he asks Suwa how well he can hold his drink since what he's about to make is a bit strong. After that conversation, Su Hua seemed to have just kept on drinking He Yun Ho's mixes, which now leads us back to the present with the drunk and passed out Su Hua on his back on their way home. On their way, He Yun Ho just kept on trying to wake Su Hua up by talking non-stop to him. He Yun Ho even started shaking the young man awake. Although it did wake Su Hua up, it also made Su Hua bite He Yun Ho's neck after he got irritated since all the movement did is hurt his head. By then, Su Hua isn't keeping still, and it's becoming harder for He Yun Ho to carry him. Meanwhile, Johan is in the veranda, worrying about Su Hua, who hasn't come home yet. It's already past 10, not to mention Su Hua's not answering his calls. Johan is just thinking about going to his school and checking if Su Hua is still there when he suddenly hears a thud from somewhere. Apparently, the noise came from He Yun Ho and Su Hua's direction after He Yun Ho lost his balance and the both of them fell. He Yun Ho was just about to help Su Hua up when he suddenly felt a foreboding presence near him. He Yun Ho starts to stutter after realizing who it is. Without saying anything, Johan's eyes quickly notice the bite marks on He Yun Ho's neck. Johan then picks up Su Hua in his arms while He Yun Ho tries to explain that he didn't drop Su Hua on purpose, and that Su Hua just got really drunk and kept on biting him. He even Ho is at his wit's end, trying to explain himself so that Johan doesn't get mad at him, and the drunk Su Hua isn't helping at all. Johan flinches after Su Hua suddenly declares that his bum bums hurt. This made He Yun Ho panic even more since that statement could have been taken incorrectly. And so He Yun Ho once again urgently explains that he was carrying Su Hua on his back and accidentally dropped him. And that's why he hurt his butt. Suddenly, Johan pinches He Yun Ho's lips close and tells him that he's going to let He Yun Ho off since it's late. Although it's not the end of it since next time the two of them are going to talk. Johan is glaring at He Yun Ho fiercely as he does that. He Yun Ho shivers as he nods in agreement, his eyes watery with tears brought by fear. Not long after, Su Hua is now lying on the bed, still completely out of it. Su Hua barely gains consciousness when Johan starts talking to him. Johan points out how he sent Su Hua to school, yet he returned home wasted. And not only did Su Hua not answer Johan's calls, he also left a mark on another guy. Johan then asks Su Hua what he should do in this situation. Of course, Su Hua couldn't care less about it and is just really concerned about his bum bums that hurt, which didn't help his case at all. Johan then turns him over and exposes Su Hua's bruised bum bums. After which Johan takes off the sweater he's wearing and declares that Su Hua needs to be punished tonight. Boo! Lala! Even though Su Hua is obviously still out of it, the bedroom rodeo is very much live and intense. So much so that it got to the point where Su Hua was already begging Johan to stop and pretty much exaggerated his complaints, saying things like he's dying and his back hurts, not that Johan listened. Although once he actually did, Su Hua still complains, this time because Johan did what he was complaining about from earlier. Well, he's not an eco for nothing. Heh. Anyways, in the end, the rodeo continued, but this time, no more complaints came from Su Hua. It was already dawn when Su Hua finally sobered up. As he did, he tries to remember when he got home and how he was having dinner with He Yun Ho before then, while trying to hurry home so he can do the humpy pumpy with Johan. It's just unfortunate or not that he did so while Johan is still executing his punishment. Once Johan realizes that Su Hua has come to his senses, 
He turns him over so that they're facing each other. Suwa then asks Johan what was happening. Of how many times have they actually done it? And if it's because he did something wrong. Johan then responds by telling him about how he came home drunk last night and how Suwa couldn't even walk that he Yoon Ho of the sleazeball had to carry him on his back. Not only did Johan couldn't reach Suwa for hours, Suwa even left a bite mark on he Yoon Ho's neck. After hearing all that, Suwa realized that Johan had every right to get mad at him and even mentally scolds himself for being stupid. Well, alcohol does that to you. After reflecting on his stupidity, Suwa then asks Johan if he's still mad at him. Johan replies that he was earlier but has calmed down since then. And when Suwa asks again when Johan's going to be completely okay, the older man just replies only after a few more rounds. Then again, they were supposed to do it anyway. Johan just got an excuse to get intense. Heh. Morning came and Suwa is still in bed. He woke up to Johan feeling him up and immediately asked Johan what he was doing. Johan simply responded that he was measuring him but didn't explain further. Changing the topic, Johan asks Suwa how he's feeling and if he thinks he can go to class. As he did, he started massaging Suwa's legs to make him feel better, tickling the younger man. Anyway, Suwa tells him that he won't be going to his class and that he'll just term in a doctor's note later. How I wish it was this easy to skip classes back when I was still at school. Suddenly, Johan apologizes to Suwa, admitting that he feels like he's getting in the way of Suwa's studies again. Suwa, in return, adamantly denies it, suddenly sitting up that he felt the pain in his back as he did. Johan then urges Suwa to lie back down, and he does, but not before making it clear to Johan that he doesn't have to worry about anything. After all, his grades are not bad, so Johan doesn't have to worry about Suwa missing a class or two. Johan humors him, instructing Suwa to stay still while he gets the heating pad for him. Once Johan turns to leave, Suwa grabs onto his apron and asks Johan if he's still mad at him and tries to apologize once again. But Johan tells him that he's not mad at Suwa anymore. Although Suwa noticed the emphasis that Johan did, he ignored it. And instead, he declares that he belongs solely to Johan. And not Suwa won't let them grow apart even if he gets a job. And it doesn't matter what other people might say about it. Now it's Johan's turn to notice Suwa's emphasis in his statement but chose not to inquire about it either. Instead, Johan just tells Suwa that he feels the same way as he did. Therefore, Suwa can just do whatever he wants. With that, Johan once again tries to leave to get the heating pad. Not long after, Johan returns only he didn't have the heating pad since he couldn't find it. But since they still have to do something about Suwa's back, he brought back a pain relief patch as an alternative. Fortunately, it did help Suwa's discomfort. On a different note, Suwa asks Johan, if he'd already gotten new applicants for the shop since Ji Yoon had already been arranged to quit by next month. Johan explains that Ji Yoon had already put up an ad online, although Johan has yet to find anyone that fits his criteria. That said, Su Wa tries to volunteer himself, but Johan declines it, and instead just asks Su Wa if he's hungry and offers to make him breakfast. As Su Wa was left alone lying back down in the bed, he couldn't help but feel upset at how nonchalant Johan was when he offered. Even though Johan used to feel super happy whenever Suwa offered to help in the cafe. Not to mention, Johan also seems to be cool regarding Suwa's job hunting. Suwa knows that he's also at fault for misspeaking previously. Still, it's upsetting to him. And then suddenly, a realization hit him. Once Johan did hire a new employee, then that would mean it would just be Johan and the new employee left to work together. A couple of days later, Suwa is walking with Ha Young and Hei Young shivering in the cold weather even though they're already wearing winter clothes. Hyung is complaining that the temperature was above zero just two days ago. And yet now, it suddenly spikes to sub-zero. They still have two hours left before their next class, so Young suggests they should just cut their walk short and instead look for an empty classroom to warm up. On their way back to their building, Young opens up about Suwa taking his graduation exam next week and suggests they go on an overnight trip afterward. It seems that he will start working during the winter break, so he wants to go somewhere with them before he does. Curious, Suwa asks where Heyoung plans on working, to which his Kube responds that he's still looking for a place and actually considered Yohan's cafe after he saw the ad online. Unfortunately, there were some specific requirements, so he might not go through with applying. Although Heyoung is thinking of recommending it to a friend instead. It was Heyoung's turn to get curious and ask about the requirements, 
which her boyfriend willingly showed her. This includes how it's a day shift job and that the prospective employee must know basic sign language. There was other stuff, too, that Hyung thinks Yohan will have difficulty finding someone who fits it soon. The requirements sounded too picky, and there was no way Yohan had listed them. Anyways, just by reading the list, anyone who knew them would think that the only person suited for the job was Suwa. He's just perfect for it. Now, this observation just got Suwa into thinking how even the two think he's perfect for the job at the cafe, and that it'd feel weird if he wasn't the one who'll actually get the position. As if finally making up his mind, Suwa suddenly asks Hyung if he can borrow her phone. It seems as if she already has an idea of what Suwa is thinking and tries to talk him out of it, but Suwa insists. In the end, Hyung still manages to convince Suwa to walk them through what's on his mind. Yohan is sitting in one corner of the cafe looking at a piece of paper when Ji Yoon notices and approaches him. Ji Yoon asks Yohan what he's doing instead of putting up the decorations so they can take a break sooner. That was when Yohan showed Ji Yoon the paper, told him it was the final draft, and asked Ji Yoon what he thought about it. Ji Yoon tries to look at it and comments that it's already a big improvement, if only to not offend Yohan, but still shortly admitted that he still couldn't read Yohan's handwriting. Yohan starts feeling upset, realizing that his writing is really bad. I personally feel attacked, but anyway. Ji Yoon managed to turn the table by telling Yohan how he thinks it's cool, that it's going to look like a coded message that only he and Suwa could understand. And since Yohan is a sucker, Ji Yoon's impromptu excuse worked well. Ji Yoon then offers to order it for Yohan. The older man says no since he'll go later himself. Instead, he asks Ji Yoon to look after the cafe for him. Ji Yoon then confidently says to Yohan that he highly recommends the place and that whatever it is will come out great. With that settled, they once again start working on the winter decorations of the cafe. Later that day, after school, Suwa and the young young couple were in a cafe somewhere. Suwa explains to them that although he may have done impulsive things in the past, he can assure them that what he's thinking of doing now isn't just on impulse. Suwa admits to having given it a lot of thought about how he couldn't just let someone else be alone with Johan. Even if it's just work. If that were the case, then he'd rather be that someone instead. Suwa's Hubei's is stayed silent for a while, which made him uncomfortable. But then they suddenly start giggling, realizing that Suwa is simply jealous. Contrary to what they first thought, that Suwa wants to get the job simply because he felt bad for Johan not finding someone. Suwa denies the thought. After all, he had never felt bad for Johan. He's not even in a position to pity anyone anyway. Anyway, with all that now being cleared, Hyung concludes that if Suwa wants to secretly apply for the position, he needs a number that Johan doesn't know. After all, Suwa isn't sure how Johan will react once he finds out about Suwa's plan. Johan might even think that it's his fault again. That's good and all. But the young young couple tells their son Bae that they can't help him in his mission. It's not because they'll feel bad about lying, but because Johan already has both of their numbers. After all, the two are extroverts who can easily make friends with anyone. Anyways, it's too bad. And so, Suwa is thinking of just telling Johan later on himself instead. Just then, he receives a text from Johan about how he's running an errand and wants to head home with Suwa. Without thinking twice, Suwa starts to prepare to leave, explaining to the two that Johan is coming to get him there so they can head home. He was just telling them that he'll just tell Johan about his decision himself, but then they try to convince him to go through with his original plan. Young asks him if he doesn't have any other friends he can ask, to which Suwa admits that he really doesn't have any other friends besides them. Just then, someone knocked on the window, who turned out to be Johan with a piece of snack in hand as if to lure Suwa out with. Suwa immediately stood up and bid goodbye to the two, making them wonder if Suwa is excited about seeing Johan or the snack. I mean, it's a snack. Who wouldn't get excited about food? Anyway, as Suwa turned to leave, the younger couple made him promise to keep his plans a secret from Johan for now, until they can think of something to help him with it. Suwa couldn't help feeling suspicious and somehow regrets getting the two of them involved. Not long after, Johan and Suwa are walking in the street while Suwa enjoys his snack. Johan suddenly grabs Suwa's free hand and slips it inside his pocket. Although it surprised Suwa and made him blush, he didn't take his hand back. The two of them then start talking about how it will be Christmas soon, right after Suwa's exams. Johan asks Suwa if there's anything he wants, but as expected, Suwa just wants something delicious to eat. When Suwa throws the question back to Johan, the older man says there isn't anything he wants either. 
although there is something that he wants Suwa to do for him. Curious, Suwa asks what it is, but then Johan starts beating about the bush and asks Suwa if he's really going to do it for Johan if he asks. Feeling annoyed, Suwa declares that he'll do it whatever it is, so Johan should just tell him. But then Johan says that he'll only tell him on Christmas Day which just made Suwa become suspicious and wonder if Johan is actually planning on asking him to do something weird. Instead of assuring him, Johan just reminds Suwa that he already promised to do it. Later that evening, once Johan and Suwa got home, Ji Yun hands Suwa the star for the Christmas tree and instructs him to put it up. For some reason, Suwa got so excited and even made Ji Yun film him as he tried to do so while getting on Johan's shoulders. Early in the morning, Su Wa woke up to his phone vibrating for incoming messages. They were from Hai Young and Hei Young, greeting him a Merry Christmas and informing him that they had already talked to a friend who was willing to help them. In fact, she already has a date for the interview. Su Wa couldn't believe that they actually managed to do something about his problem, but is still very grateful. As he was just replying to his thanks, he realized that it's already Christmas and slowly moved towards the window to check the weather. Suwa immediately tries to wake Johan up so that he can also look out the window. Turns out, it's a sunny Christmas morning without snow, and because they set the temperature too high the previous night, even Johan feels hot right now. The weather had been all over the place that they couldn't even guess what it would be like in a few hours. That's global warming for you. While Johan and Suwa are having a hearty breakfast, Suwa shows Johan movie tickets for a foreign film and asks if he wants to watch it in the afternoon. Johan doesn't mind although he still wondered where Suwa could have gotten the tickets. It's been a while since he had seen one himself that he thought Suwa was showing him some receipts. Same, my dear. I mean, one ticket is way more expensive than a month's subscription to Netflix. Anyways, Suwa remembers how someone suddenly grabbed him to a bush on the day he was finally done with his graduation exam. It was He Yun Ho who was trying to be sneaky, meaning Suwa after Johan had banned him from the cafe. He Yun Ho apologizes for startling Suwa and asks him not to tell Johan that he came to meet with Suwa. He Yun Ho also wants to apologize for what happened the other day when they had gotten home late, remembering what had happened. Suwa immediately sprung up and apologized for what he had done and asked about He Yun Ho's neck. The older man admits that although it's been a week, Suwa's bite marks are still there and was actually bleeding when he got home that night. Like, dude, are you some sort of rabid animal? He Yun Ho might need some shots because of it. Heh. Anyway, of course, Suwa felt even worse because of this. Although He Yun Ho dismisses it, after all, it's true that he did mess up himself, and as it turns out, Johan had already scolded him through a very long text after getting He Yun Ho's number from Mr. Numwu. Guess that business card he left to come in handy. Long story short, a lot has happened since then, and He Yun Ho tells Suwa that it's better that he doesn't know about it. That said, he Yun Ho came to give them something as a token apology. It was a couple of movie tickets for Suwa and Johan. It's already set for a particular film, although they can also choose some other title if they want. Anyway, Suwa feels bad that he's the only one receiving something from He Yun Ho, so he invites him to treat him to some food, but probably also due to trauma from last time. He Yun Ho vehemently declined and insisted that he likes eating alone. Still, Suwa felt bad, so they compromised with an e gift which He Yun Ho graciously accepted and chose a sweet potato cake for himself. Going back to the present, Su Wa just tells Johan that he received the tickets from a friend, being careful not to give He Yun Ho away. Johan then asks what kind of movie it was and Su Wa explains that he had watched the trailer and it seemed like it's a light fantasy type story that's actually coming out today. Su Wa did try looking for some barrier-free movies, but they were all old, so he figured that Johan had already watched all of them. Anyway, the point is the movie they're going to watch is the best option they had, and the two of them are looking forward to it. Later in the afternoon, the two bought popcorn and sat in the back row. Suwa felt happy since there isn't anyone sitting next to them, making it seem like they're in a couple's seat. And Johan is just glad for sitting at the back since he'd feel bad if someone from the back couldn't read the subtitles because of how tall he is. Not long after, the movie began, and although they started it feeling excited, it soon sent them to tears as scenes of stabbing whacking, and crying out for help were shown. Nowhere near the light fantasy type movie they were led to believe. That's right. Even trailers lie, ladies and gents. Never believe social media blindly. Meanwhile, He Yun Ho is talking to someone from work who tells him how the new fantasy movie that came out on Christmas Day is actually super gory and not meant for kids. 
Stick to say He Yoon Ho now has another thing to apologize for to the couple. Guess Johan did well banning him from the cafe. Heh. After the movie, Johan still feels awful as they leave the theater. He sounded like he was going to get curious about the friend who gave Suwa the ticket. So before Johan could get any ideas, Suwa excuses himself to go to the restroom and asks Johan what he'd do. Johan then tells Suwa he has something to pick up from the next building. He then tells Suwa that they should just meet on the first floor afterward. Suwa offers to come with Johan, but the older man insists on going alone. After all, he's going to pick up Suwa's present so he can just open it when he gets home later. That said, Suwa remembers the promise that Johan made him do last time, and for some reason, it made Suwa feel nervous about what it could be. Once they got home, Suwa found out that the gift was a set of suits, a peach one at that. Yoon felt shy standing before Johan as the older man snapped pictures on his phone, all the while praising Suwa for how great and cute it looked on him. Suwa tells Johan it's the perfect size for him and wonders if it's expensive. Johan explains that it isn't since it's not a tailored one, and that Suwa could wear the suit in his interviews. Whatever made Johan think that such bright colored suits are suitable for interviews is beyond me. Although Suwa also can understand why Johan chose such color since in his opinion it's the color that best highlights Suwa's cuteness and whatnot. Just as Johan turns to genuinely compliment him, Suwa tells Johan that he also wants to see the older man in a suit, since it's unfair that he's the only one wearing it. Suwa then forces Johan to change into his suit despite Johan insisting that the set would probably not fit him anymore since it's still the one he used back in college and he has already gained weight since then. But Suwa just won't hear any of it. And so Johan did. And although the shirt still somehow managed to do its job, Johan couldn't even get the jacket past his arms. As Suwa took his share of pictures, he couldn't help but think that Johan had just gained muscle instead of weight. Ah, this idiot couple. Somehow, I suddenly feel like wanting to whack some grown men in suits. Suddenly, Johan stops Suwa from taking more pictures of him, saying that it's embarrassing. But Suwa points out that Johan did too, to which the older man responds that it's because Suwa is cute. And so, the argument of who among them is cuter commences, only to stop ten minutes later after realizing how embarrassing they have been acting. In his attempt to change the atmosphere, Suwa suddenly points out that since they're wearing suits, it feels like they are working at the same company. And in this situation, he would probably be the new hire and Johan is the assistant manager or team leader. Humoring him, Johan says it could also be the other way around. Johan got into the character by complimenting Suwa about his suit again, but this time, he addressed him formally using his last name. In return, Suwa also addresses Johan in his complete name, which got Johan to react. Johan then asks Suwa if he just said his full name, and Suwa says yes. Suwa was perplexed, thinking that it made Johan uncomfortable, but instead, Johan just tells him to do it again. And as soon as Suwa did, Johan suddenly kissed him on the lips. Johan came to Suwa intensely to the point that Suwa fell on the floor. Johan then explains how Suwa's lips look like he's about to kiss him when he says his name. Dude, stop. This is too cringy. And as if saying such embarrassing stuff isn't enough, Johan then suddenly demands that Suwa grant him his Christmas present now, all while still addressing Suwa by his last name. Feeling nervous and embarrassed, Suwa tells Johan to stop with the office role play since it's making him feel awkward being addressed like that by Johan. He also points out how Johan already got his wish by dressing Suwa in a suit, but then Johan tells him that his wish is actually the opposite. With his face still very much flushing, Johan took his necktie to his lips as he told him that his wish was actually to undress Suwa. I really cannot with these two. I swear I'm getting hives. As requested, Johan started unbuttoning Suwa's shirt. It made Suwa feel so embarrassed, especially since Johan is taking more time than usual. Once Suwa couldn't take it anymore, he suddenly declared that he'd just do it himself. Johan tries to protest. After all, it was his present that Suwa already agreed to do. Therefore, Suwa suggested that Johan watch him undress instead. After all, didn't Johan take his clothes off him all the time? Ah, I can't believe he just said that. I'm having secondhand embarrassment. And while the compromise did convince Johan, Suwa also noticed the appearing bulge in Johan's lower half. With both Johan's and Suwa's jackets now neatly hanged, Suwa stood in front of Johan, 
who is now attentively watching him and even gave a thumbs up as a signal for Suwa to start. Okay. Am I the only one who wants to bury these two alive? Anyways, despite feeling that something's wrong because something is, in fact, wrong, Suwa still starts to take off his clothes. As he did, Suwa tries to talk to Johan about sitting up straight in a chair, like he's about to watch a show of some sorts. Johan is convinced and instead just walks towards Suwa and plops himself right in front of him, this time acting like the perv that he is. Well, it didn't look like Suwa could him out of it again this time, so he just gave up and proceeded with his task. But once Suwa starts taking off his shirt, Johan stops him and tells him to leave the shirt for last and take off his pants first. Suwa did as told, although he stops again because suddenly Johan is being too close this time. And as Suwa was trying to point it out, Johan couldn't stop himself and decided to help with the task. Before Suwa could talk Johan out of it, the older man was already on his knees and giving Suwa a service. Before Johan could go further, Suwa managed to stop him by saying that at this rate, the suit would get wrinkled. Then again, it looks like Johan could care less. After completely taking off his pants, Johan then lifts Suwa up and against the wall, acting as if Suwa has finally finished his task. Suwa was just saying how he still has his shirt and socks on, completely disregarding his underwear. But once again, Johan dismisses this. Instead, Johan just tells Suwa that they should just pretend that he's already taken off everything and that they should now proceed to the next step. With the underwear now finally off as well, Johan now freely massages Suwa's black hole. Suwa wanted Johan to just go ahead and put it inside him, but Johan insisted that Suwa needed more preparation. Apparently, it's becoming too much for Suwa to handle, so Suwa decided to share the sensation. Without warning, Suwa reaches out at Johan's pants and unzips them. Suwa then takes out Johan's sword and rubs it against his own. Shortly after, tartar sauce drips down Suwa's legs. Although this didn't stop Johan from doing his task. As Johan reaches out to kiss Suwa, the sword of fighting continues until both of their middle thirds are covered in love creams. Confident that he's now ready, Suwa asks where the rubber is, to which Johan immediately replies that it's in his back pocket. He then asks Suwa to put it on for him. Suwa didn't mind at all, although he did find it cute that Johan made sure to put a rubber in his back pocket when he changed earlier. It pays to always be prepared, I guess. Heh. They were hard at work with Johan bearing all the weight since they're doing it while standing. Not long after, Suwa reached his climax. And since Johan still hadn't, the workout continues only stopping once Johan finally reached his, after which it finally decided to wash up. Later that day, as Johan helps Suwa button his PJs up, he tells the younger man to go to bed if he's tired. But then Suwa points out how the sun hasn't even set yet, not to mention it's Christmas. He still wants to spend more time with Johan. Touched, Johan suddenly tackles Suwa and compromises by telling him that they should take a nap for now and have some cake later, which he'll bake himself. Suwa agrees, but only if Johan puts some strawberries on top of it. And so, the kiss, Johan promises to put some strawberries and chocolate on top. On the evening of another day, Suwa greets the friend that Ha Young and Hei Young were talking about. The bespectacled girl, whose name is So Yeon, is a sophomore who, according to Hei Young, agreed to the favor when they said they'd treat her to fried chicken. Like I said, food is life. As the three of them discuss how Suwa would be paying for the fried chicken, so Yeon shyly raised her concern. She points out how this plan looks illegal. So Yeon explains that she agreed to it because she likes fried chicken, but it still feels sketchy. Although she got an interview after turning in an application using her name and personal info, if someone else shows up instead, they'll inevitably be a scam. And it doesn't matter that it's a surprise. After the reality sank in, Su Ad is once again distraught. Even the young young couple felt responsible. But before the three of them lose all hope, So Yeon turns the mood over and tells them that she has an idea. Ah, my kind of girl, making a problem and solving the problem herself. One morning, Su Ah was just about done making breakfast while the freshly bathed Johan is tapping away on his phone. Curious as to what had been keeping Johan busy, Su Ah reaches out to him to ask him what was wrong. Johan then explains that the applicant who was supposed to come for the interview today had just texted him to cancel due to an emergency. And instead, she's sending someone else so Johan can hire that person if he wants. Johan was telling Suwa how, even though he understood that emergencies happen, it was still very unprofessional to cancel on the day of the interview. Not to mention sending someone else instead, just like that. All the while, 
Su Hua couldn't help feeling guilty after realizing that this was what So Yi An meant when she said she had an idea. Anyways, Johan explains that although he said yes, he also doesn't think that it's going to be someone he could trust. Therefore, he warns Su Hua to stay in their room during the interview since the person might turn out to be a weirdo. The cafe is closed for the day anyway, so there won't be any reason for Su Hua to head downstairs either. While Su Hua was reflecting on this plan of his, he couldn't help but feel discouraged already. He's also worried that Johan will get mad at him instead. As he was in the middle of that dilemma, Johan gets his attention and compliments the breakfast that Su Hua made, making Su Hua blush in return. In order to at least secure some safeguard for him, Su Hua tells Johan that the person he's going to interview later might not be that weird, so he should be nice to them. Johan is baffled at Su Hua's words but doesn't inquire further. Later that day, Johan found himself coming early for the interview, so he decided to make some drinks while he waited. As Johan prepares the drinks, he's reflecting on how he's a bit nervous now, seeing as it's his first time hiring someone on his own. At the same time, he also hopes that whoever is coming won't be some weirdo, just like Su Hua said. Then again, before Su Hua came, Johan had already met a bunch of weird people that he's already used to them. Still, it would be great if he could hire someone like Su Hua, Ji Yoon, or even Ji Hei. Even though Johan refuses to be treated like a kid by everyone, it's also true that he has depended on them a lot, and now that he's going to be on his own, he feels a bit empty and alone. Anyway, Johan was on his way back to the second floor with the drinks, reflecting on how he should start acting more independently when his train of thought was cut short when he saw who was waiting for him. In fact, Johan almost dropped the tray of drinks he had prepared when he saw Su Hua in his brand new suit, patiently waiting for him. After Johan recovers, still not having an inkling of what's happening, he then asks Su Hua what he's doing there. As Johan slowly walked towards the table to put down the tray, Su Hua couldn't help feeling anxious, especially when Johan said that him being there right now isn't a good time. Of course, Su Hua thinks that Johan already disagrees with what he is thinking of doing. After all, Su Hua was the one who told Johan that they might not live together forever, not to mention using unjust methods just so he starts working for the cafe again. Su Hua would definitely understand Johan getting upset. As Su Hua starts to lose hope of convincing Johan to give him a chance, a red-faced and anxious-looking Johan suddenly leans towards him. Johan then shyly whispers that although he likes doing office role-playing, he can't do it right now. They should do it after the interview. Although if Su Hua really insists on doing it now because of the thrill, then Johan is all for it as well. Safe to say, Su Hua exclaims in anger and embarrassment, dumbfounded that Johan would even think of him that way. Anyway. Once the two of them had settled down on their seats and Su Hua had explained to Johan what had happened, for a moment Johan just calmly looks at Su Hua without saying anything. Su Hua apologizes and then asks if Johan is mad. Wait, shouldn't the apology come after knowing if the other person is actually mad or not? Still, Johan responds that he's not mad. If Su Hua really wants the job, he can have it. Plus, Johan isn't really in the position to go against what Su Hua wants. It's just that Johan feels like he might be getting in the way of Su Hua's future. But, of course, that's not really the case. Stu Hua explains that, although Johan did affect his decision, it's not like it's a bad thing. First of all, it's a fact that it's hard to find a job nowadays. And yet, here's the cafe that not only pays well, but also has a lot of customers. Second, since the two of them already promised to be together forever, working in the cafe with Johan would mean that Su Hua is already set on that course. Su Hua working in the cafe isn't getting in the way of Su Hua's future. In fact, it's more like a dream job to him. Because whatever happens, he's not going to let Johan go, and he's serious about it. After hearing Su Hua out, Johan couldn't help but laugh, feeling like he's just been proposed to, which he doesn't really mind. Although he still did reprimand Su Hua for trying to deceive him. That said, Johan commences with the interview. Johan started with the basic questions like knowing how to make coffee, having experience working in a cafe and knowing sign language. And then Johan asks if Su Hua is alright being with him all day. Well, it's more like 24 hours a day since they're living together. Anyway, in response, Su Hua stood up from his seat and tells Johan that being with him is exactly what he wants. When Johan was just about to ask the next question, Su Hua stops him, declaring that he doesn't want anyone else to work with Johan. After which Su Hua suddenly kisses his interviewer. Tsk, tsk. Tsk. How very unprofessional, Mr. Kong Suwa. Then again, it's not like the other party hates it. 
In fact, Johan also stood from his seat and returned Suwa kisses. Johan also pushed away the table separating them, and then asked Suwa if they should do some office role playing now. Not that Suwa is about to deny him of that, but he still had to ask about the interview that he himself stopped earlier. In response, Johan tells Suwa, it's a given that he got the job. Meanwhile, Ji Hei was reading the qualifications for the new cafe employee and then asked Ji Yun if he was the one who wrote them. When Ji Yun nonchalantly confirms and asks if there is anything wrong, Ji Hei points out that Ji Yun should have just asked Suwa to take the job since it's so obvious Ji Yun had him in mind when he came up with the list. Peft. And miss all the fiasco the pervy couple got themselves into? Yeah, right. Although, of course, Ji Yun would never admit that. Still, I'd say good job. Ji Yoon. It was snowing on the graduation day when Johan found himself crouched in front of a stand selling a bunch of flowers. Even the passersby looked at him weirdly after he looked so intensely at the flowers. That was when the seller approaches him and tries to ask a bunch of questions to help him choose. As expected of someone in this line of work, the seller then enumerated and recommended a bunch of flowers that Johan could choose from. But since there were a lot, in the end, it just made it harder for Johan to choose. Later that day, the young young couple were trying to contact Johan, who should have arrived by now. Hei Young suggested that they try doing a video call with him. Although Hai Young points out that they don't even know sign language. Just then, Johan arrives with a bunch of flower bouquets in his arms. Seeing Johan, the couple couldn't help but feel bad for him, since it seems like he wasn't able to say no. Ha, introvert problems, glad to know I'm not alone. He. Meanwhile, on Suwa's side, both his parents are in tears seeing their son in his graduation gown. When Suwa asks them why they're crying, they tell him how they just can't believe that their son is now graduating. After all, Suwa had moved out of their house as soon as he went to college. He even refused to accept allowance from them. This is when Suwa points out how it was them who told him to move out once he became an adult. That way the two of them can enjoy each other in privacy. Then again, it's not like Suwa resents them for it. After all, it's also because of his parents' selfishness that he was able to meet Johan. Changing the topic, his parents ask him if there's going to be a ceremony indoors. Suwa explains that there is what it would mostly be for those getting awards since all the graduating students won't fit inside. Instead, the majority of the graduates would just hang outside and take some pictures before heading home. Suwa was just telling his parents how some of his friends are coming soon when someone suddenly calls out to him. Turning to the direction of the voice, Su Wa saw the young young couple with the very tall Johan right behind them. Su Wa and his parents were stunned when they saw Johan with his bouquets and immediately had the same reaction as Hai Young and Hei Young. Anyways, the embarrassed Su Wa soon formally introduces his friends to his parents, and his parents especially took notice of Johan, seeing as he's the manager of the cafe that he'll be working at. The two of them were saying and asking a bunch of stuff in quick succession that Johan couldn't even keep up. That was when Suwa intervened and told them to speak slowly and one at a time since Johan reads lips. After reflecting on this, they finally calm down and Suwa's mother politely introduces herself to Johan and thanks him for taking care of Suwa. Seeing her up close, Johan couldn't help but see the resemblance between the mother and son. Suwa then tells Johan to use sign language if he must and Suwa will translate it for him. Instead of doing that, however, Johan bowed politely while telling them himself that he'd take good care of Suwa. And of course, those in the know, like Suwa and the young young couple, blushed at the other meaning that Johan's words had. As Suwa's mother compliments Johan's voice and his father returns the gesture, Johan himself does a sign to Suwa, informing him that he's serious. Suwa is speechless at Johan's boldness and drops his flowers. Not that any of his parents suspected anything, or if they did, no one said anything. Not long after, starts snowing a lot while they were taking groupies. The parents invited Suwa's friends to join them for a meal, but not only the young young couple, even Johan declines the invitation. Johan then gestures to Suwa, saying that he should spend time with his parents and bring them to a nice restaurant. Also, if he can't come home by today, Suwa can just text him. And that when he gets back, Johan will be waiting for him. His parents asked what Johan was saying, but Suwa didn't properly translate it. Instead, he just tells his parents that Johan is also heading back and that they should just have a family dinner, much to their disappointment. As Suwa pushes his parents to head inside the building so they can wait for him there while he returns his cap and gown, Suwa shyly glances at Johan. Suwa then gestures to Johan, 
saying that he'll be back after dinner, so Johan should take a shower and wait for him. And, of course, Johan welcomes that. After dinner, Suwa's parents are trying to give him a lift back to his place, but Suwa insists on taking the subway, saying how it's snowing a lot, so they should go before it gets too late. After complimenting Suwa's thoughtfulness and hugging him, they went their separate ways. Suwa tells his parents to be careful, and that he'll get his flowers some other time. When Suwa got back, Johan was waiting for him outside. Suwa asks him why he is waiting there instead of inside, but Johan insists that he hasn't been waiting long. Johan then asks Suwa if he doesn't mind staying outside with him for a while, to which Suwa readily agrees. Not long after, the two of them settled in the backyard, warming themselves with the heater that Johan had secured. Suddenly, Johan compliments that it's pretty. Although at first, Suwa thinks that Johan is talking about the snow, the older man corrects him by pointing out that he is actually talking about Suwa, making him blush and feel awkward all of a sudden. And then, Johan suddenly congratulates him for graduating, after which he pulls out a box from his pocket. Johan explains that he had wanted to give it as Suwa's Christmas gift. Unfortunately, the customization took a while. So, it ended up becoming a graduation gift instead. Seeing the expensive box, Suwa is at first hesitant to open it, but Johan urges him to do so. And once he did, he's stunned to see that it was a super expensive-looking watch. Johan nonchalantly explains that although he doesn't know what brand it is, Ji Yoon helped him get a huge discount. All Stu Wa could say to that is how Johan knows how to use his connections. That said, Johan then asks Su Wa to come over to him since he wants to put it on for Su Wa. The younger man complied, although he suddenly felt shy as he found himself now sitting on Johan's lap. Suddenly, Su Wa notices the writing inside the watch and asks Johan if he knows what it means, innocently saying how he doesn't think it's English since he can't read it. After seeing the embarrassed and dumbfounded reaction that Johan had, Suwa concluded that it was Johan who had written it. Johan admitted it as well, making Suwa realize that this could probably be the final product of all those countless papers that preoccupied Johan for a time. And so, Suwa went straight and asked Johan what it meant, even guessing that it's probably not just a word since it looks pretty long. Johan explains that he had wanted to make it longer, but it would just feel like he was rambling so he had to shorten it, gesturing for Suwa to come closer. Johan then whispers the meaning in his ears after he makes Suwa promise not to tell anyone. It seems like Suwa is so touched by it because he suddenly declares how much he loves Johan and kisses him on the lips. Johan kisses him back as he tells Suwa that he feels the same. Not long after, winter came to an end as the season changed. The door to Johan's cafe opens and Suwa quickly notices it, letting Johan know in the process so they can both welcome the customer. Although this series comes to an end without us knowing what was written in Su Wa's watch, I guess we can just let it go since it is, in fact, a secret code that only the two of them are supposed to know. Anyway, that's it, folks. Thank you for anticipating this series after all this time. See you in the next series recap.